So Derek, uh, let's go with uh, cross hand grab from here. I'm going to be doing these techniques very slowly for two reasons. One, so that you can see them, and also because I don't want to hurt Derek. So from this position here, we're going to get our other hand up. That way we can ward off anything coming from the other side. And I'm simply going to roll this pen to the outside, getting the tip over the bone. And from here, I can do a simple escape and then do anything that I need to with the other hand. Or I can turn that same concept into a lock by simply isolating his hand and trapping it there, and then simply a downward motion. From here, I can then strip off and then come through and do anything else that I need to. So one more time, here, up, over, and down. Okay. From that same position right here, I can bring the hand up and trap with the pen as I'm stepping forward. In this case now, as I trap and pull him into me, I'm going to use that other hand rather than warding. I'm going to try and get off to the side just a little bit so that this isn't as much of a weapon over here. And as I do this, I'm going to strike. I've created a trap here with the pen against my body, and now I can wrap him, or I can simply just disengage and drop him from there. So one more time from there, I'm simply going to come up, trap, and pull in, and strike. If I'm a little slow with this, I start to do this, what this might become is just an escape. This is going to be very painful to get this pen on the bone right there. Not even thinking about getting to the point, but just getting the shaft of it around there to enhance the locking capability. So let's go one more from, from the cross hand. From here, I'm simply going to come up, and this might be for somebody that's maybe a little smaller, working against a, a larger adversary. This time I'm going to come up with that same thing, but I'm going to come up into an enhanced grip. I'm going to get the other hand up there. That's just going to come right up to that hand that should already be up, and I'm simply going to just strip this straight down from there. Now. From here as I do this, if I get that point in there, I'm going to take something away. A little DNA collection if I get that digging in there really hard. So one more time, hand up, enhance the grip, and just come straight down, pulling them off balance. Chances are I'm also going to need to come back in and engage somehow with that, but at least I've, I've uh, gotten their hand off me at that point. So one more time, up, down, and then do whatever else I might need to do in there. Let's go ahead and switch to a two-hand grip. Right here, a lot of the concepts are the same. I can simply come over this way, same sort of a thing. Come up over, since it's two hands, you might have a stronger grip on me. Even somebody that's, that's larger might want to come up into that enhanced grip. And in this case, what I might do is I might just pull him into me. And as I pull in, locking him in here, I can just come straight off the top with that shot. So it's going to be a nice quick shot. Hand up, enhance it, pull it in and just come right in. I can then strip this off if I wanted to, or continue the lock if I want to, and pull him back in for a hyperextension of the elbow. Where else can we? We could bring this up and into the center. Just bringing it up and just getting some sort of a pain compliance technique just by running that point down his arm or across the bone. So from here, up, and just strip this down again, moving him to the outside, and then I can come in with that hand. If he still got me with the other hand, all I do is just hook it into there and just drop it off. So again, I can come up either side with this, just by articulating the wrist, strip it, and go. I can also, from here, come in with an enhanced grip. Right now, I'm not so much using the pen itself, but I can use an enhanced grip to affect an escape coming up. And then at this point, once I've gotten the escape, I can just pull the pen up past his shoulder and then hook anything meaty, anything bony. Really, it's a, there's lots of targets in here. It's not target specific. Just enough to get that in there and drive that in there and then move him away from me. So again, go for that enhanced grip. There's my escape right there. I can strike if I want to. Just move this past and just move him out of the way, creating an opportunity to escape. Okay, let's go ahead and move to the other side. So now he's going for same side. In this case, again, I want to get that hand up there because chances are if he's made uh, this contact, he's thinking about doing something else with that other hand. So from here, immediately step to the outside. 
That way I'm creating more distance here. I'm also off his target line in case that's where he was going to be striking. So again, I'm going to move up and I can again isolate this hand, trapping that hand in there, and drop this down for the lock. I could peel if I wanted to. There's a bunch of different things I could do from there. Again, it's a target rich environment right there. Or, from that same concept, step off the line, come up in here, and just strip this off, working that shaft of the pen against his bone. So here, up, strip it, and then if I need to, I could go and engage because he's off balance, at least slightly, gives me uh, an opportunity right there. Let's look at what else we could do from in here. In this case, I'm going to use this to come up to that hand. I'm going to strip this off. And now, I'm just going to ride this up here, getting into the meat of the shoulder right here, and I'm just going to take this back and down. I've still got my lock here, locking this entire region, and I've used this to move him down. If I need to go uh, into a further concept to take control of him, I can. If not, I've got him down, and I can escape at that point. Giving something like this up and, and trying these. Uh, so to continue on, we'll go ahead and do some uh, concepts from punch. So we'll start with a straight punch. So as the punch comes in, I'm going to redirect and I'm going to split this entry. I'm going to bring this up. I'm again going to use the shaft of the pen and potentially the point to hook this, taking him off balance and moving him off my line. From here, I'm simply just going to come in and strike. I can take this concept from here and either hold him, continue to do things about his neck and shoulders, or from here, I can just drop him straight down, disengaging and allowing me to escape. So one more time with the split entry. I'm going to come up. I'm going to hit. I might just rake the shaft up. I'm going to pull him offline, strike, and either continue to strike or just drop him from here. Along that same line, we're going to split the entry again. Again, stepping offline, using this, my free hand to redirect bringing the pen up. If I get that rake, it's even some extra juice on it. But this time I'm going to take and I'm going to bring my elbow all the way through. I'm going to hook it under, again taking him even more off balance. And as I do this, I'm going to twist and come back in. Now I've got the point right up here, solar plexus, packs, wherever I need to. And from here, I'm going to just simply push and he's going to go back and I'm going to drop it in. And disengage from there or I can continue on with various other joint locks or strikes. One more time, comes in, step offline, break this down, twisting, taking control of the head, back behind here so this isn't as viable a weapon for him anymore, and then I'm simply going to direct him down. Okay, I can hold him there, or I can disengage and continue to strike. From a hooking punch, in this case, when he hooks, I don't want to be way out here on the energy end of this. I'm going to need to engage. I'm going to need to move in. And as I do this, I'm going to take a lot of the velocity off of his arm, and I'm going to run this, the tip of this pen right up. Distracting him, it's going to hurt a lot. Uh, it's going to take his mind off of what he was thinking about doing to us. So in this case, I'm going to run this up, I'm going to pull it over, and I'm just going to come over into an arm bar with him trapped on my shoulder. From here, I can use this pen right into uh, the various tendons and muscle groups in here and just push this down. Again, I can take him all the way down or I can disengage and go for the escape. So one more time from here, stop that hook, get inside of that hook, move this over, taking him off balance. I've already got him with some pain compliance because of the tip. Hook this in and then just drive him down. Again, there's a lot of targets in here. I mean, nothing's target specific with this. As he comes in with that hook, I can simply stop this and jab that and continue to jab him. Again, that's, gonna, that's really going to take his mind off of things. Um, so I'm going to jab him a few times, and then I can simply hook this over in the shoulder and just take him down. Not necessarily in a hammer lock. Really, that's just where my hand and my arm ended up. I can do that. But just pulling him off balance and just driving him down and then disengaging. Uh, from there, I can also, as he comes in, as I hit this, let's not forget about that low line. There's some great, great pressure points in here. I, don't need, I think I could be within a foot of a pressure point with this thing and it would still activate that pressure point. So from here, I can go down low. 
I guarantee you, if I bring this down low and go to the side of his knee like I just did a little harder than I had planned on, tapping him in here, that's going to buckle that knee. And again, I can disengage. So one more time thinking about those targets in there, get inside that, hit him with it. This is also going to do another thing for us in that it's going to swell our hand just a little bit. It's going to give us more structural support on that punch. So even if I don't turn that and get the tip in, it's going to enhance my punch and allow me to come in here and find those other targets. Let's go ahead and uh, stick. Now, one of the things you're not going to want to do if somebody's got a weapon is stay out here on the business end of that. Just like we don't want to stay out on the business end of that punch, we want to get inside of it. This is even more critical. I'm not going to try and lock that stick and take it out of his hand with a pen. What I am going to do is I am going to get inside of here. I know that's maybe counterintuitive for some, that we're going to have to move towards the threat. But that's what you're going to have to do. Move towards the threat. And in this case, he's just up the ante. He's just gone ahead and added a weapon to this. Um, blunt force trauma is no fun. So now we're potentially looking at maybe lethal force is justified, depending on the, the, the state or the municipality that you live in. But he's just up the ante. At this point, I'm going to get inside of that, and I'm going to hook this, and I'm going to take control. I've got to take control of this weapon bearing limb right here so that that weapon is no longer a threat, or at least I've, I've minimized the threat from that. And in this case, I'm going to want to dump him on the ground as soon as I can. So having this point of this pen anywhere back in here to help direct you down is really going to be helpful. So again, he's got that weapon. I'm going to get inside of it and I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit hard as I come in. I'm going to enter with as much pain as I possibly can. Take control of that limb. I don't care how I do it really in here. If it ends up being over, that's fine. If it ends up being an underhook, that's fine. But the minute I do this, I don't want to give him a lot of opportunities to be grabbing or anything here. I'm going to use that pain compliance of this pen to just drive him down. And then at that point, I'm going to want to strip that weapon, do something with it, take control, and then escape.